Alright team, in this video I'm going to show you the full cabbage juice routine that I followed for 30 days in 2015 while in the process of recovering from a severe case of ulcerative colitis. This cabbage juicing routine was first studied by Dr. Garnett Cheney in 1949 and into the 1950s. In 1949, Cheney published this study, Rapid Healing of Peptic Ulcers in Patients Receiving Fresh Cabbage Juice. In this study, 13 patients ranging from 26 to 72 years old with peptic ulcers were given 1 liter of fresh cabbage juice daily. 7 of these patients had duodenal ulcers, 5 patients had gastric ulcers, and 1 had a gastrojejunal ulcer. All patients showed rapid improvement compared to standard diet and medications. In 11 out of 13 patients, the ulcer craters disappeared within 6 to 9 days. For the other 2 patients, it took 14 and 23 days for the ulcer craters to heal. Overall, the average healing time for the total of 13 cases of peptic ulcer treated with cabbage juice was 9 days. I recognize this is an extremely small sample size. However, the results are still very interesting and mirrored my personal experience following the protocol. Dr. Cheney went on to publish more studies in the 1950s showing the therapeutic effects that cabbage juice has on ulcers in the digestive system. In 1952, Cheney published a study with a sample size of 100 patients that found drinking a quart of cabbage juice per day seemed to be effective in promoting the rapid healing of uncomplicated peptic ulcers compared to standard ulcer therapy. Dr. Cheney attributed the ulcer healing factor of cabbage juice to what he called vitamin U. The U stands for ulcer. Vitamin U is not actually a vitamin, it's a derivative of the amino acid methionine known as S-methylmethionine. The mechanism of action for S-methylmethionine is still not fully understood and requires further research. However, some more recent studies suggest that S-methylmethionine may have potential as a skin wound healing agent due to its ability to activate dermal fibroblasts which are necessary for skin wounds to heal. I am not a doctor or a dietitian, and the information in this video is intended only for educational purposes and should not be acted upon without the approval and supervision of a licensed physician. Err on the side of caution and do not act on this information without the supervision of a doctor who knows you, who understands your current level of health, and is aware of the many other health and medical factors that are unique to you. Real quick before we continue, we are doing a giveaway when we get to 30,000 subscribers. Chosen at random, the winner will receive a Team Hannes t-shirt and a free one hour consultation with me. If you want to be entered to win, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. When I was still very sick in 2015, I learned about a version of this cabbage juice routine from a YouTube video, and I decided to give it a try. At this point, I had been in a two month flare that consisted of sprinting to the toilet 10 to 12 times per day with horrible urgency and was passing only watery diarrhea with mucus and periodic bleeding. I had not had a formed stool since the flare started. I was extremely desperate for some sort of relief. Anyway, I started this cabbage juice routine and began drinking 32 ounces of fresh green cabbage juice per day and eating two meals per day. 32 ounces of cabbage juice is roughly equivalent to the amount used in Dr. Cheney's two studies that were previously referenced. For the first three days, all I remember is burping up a cabbage-like smell, feeling bloated, and having worse diarrhea than I did when I started. But on the third night, for the first time in two months, I passed a soft form stool instead of diarrhea. It was painful and bloody, but it had form. I was so excited about the results that I took a photo of it and sent it to all my friends to tell them that the cabbage juice was working. Over the next few days, I continued to have soft form, fluffy stools with ragged, blood-tinged edges. My digestive health continued to improve and the stools were getting firmer every day and the other symptoms were decreasing. Now, I hated the taste of the cabbage juice. But, because I was continuing to see improvement in my digestive health, I decided I would diligently follow this routine for 30 days. At the end of those 30 days, I was having 2 to 3 mostly normal bowel movements with a huge decrease in pain, urgency, mucus, and bleeding. I was still experiencing these symptoms on a minor level, but the flare was over and I felt like there was an overall 70% decrease in the intensity and frequency of the symptoms I was experiencing. Over time, I eventually achieved full clinical remission from IBD by following a gut microbiome optimizing nutritional protocol. But I want to show you the exact cabbage juice protocol that I followed because of the interesting therapeutic effects it seems to have on ulcers and because of how quickly I personally saw results while following it. I also think that a short term cabbage juice routine combined with a gut microbiome optimizing protocol would complement each other very well. If you're looking for resources on the gut microbiome optimizing protocol that I followed, I recommend you check out my free bootcamp series on YouTube or my online course Biome Optima that is more in depth and provides a downloadable 5 week sample daily routine and meal plan. 
Now the protocol I followed was based on the original YouTube video that I watched in 2015, which will be linked down below. And that YouTube video was based on Dr. Cheney's studies. I'm going to show you Dr. Cheney's exact routine from his study and then show you the way that I modified the routine based on the YouTube video that I watched. In Dr. Cheney's study, fresh cabbage juice was prepared twice a day in the morning about 10 a.m. and in the afternoon around 2 p.m. The patients in the study were served 200 milliliters of cabbage juice five times per day. The cabbage juice was refrigerated and served well chilled at 10.30 a.m., at lunch, at mid-afternoon, at supper, and in the early evening. Some of the patients also added celery juice to the cabbage juice to make it more palatable. It stated in the study that celery juice was found to also contain the antipeptic ulcer factor that cabbage juice contained. The patients who added in the celery juice did so in a ratio of 25% celery juice and 75% cabbage juice. The study also states that seasoning with salt and pepper and an addition of tomato juice was encouraged, as was the ingestion of crackers or other food along with the cabbage juice. Some notable side effects that about one third of the patients experienced while drinking the cabbage juice were mild abdominal distress and constipation. I experienced the abdominal distress, but I had diarrhea instead of constipation, and these symptoms resolved in my case after a few days on the protocol. Okay, so the protocol I followed was slightly modified. The first thing I did every morning was take between two and four capsules of a high quality probiotic supplement. I used Fluorocore GI by AST Enzymes but I think the main thing is just taking a high quality probiotic supplement. Then I would wait between 30 minutes and one hour at least before drinking my first increment of organic green cabbage juice. Instead of drinking 200 milliliter increments of cabbage juice five times per day, I drank eight ounce increments of cabbage juice, juiced fresh each time, four times per day. I usually ended up drinking a little more than eight ounces each time, but eight ounces was always my minimum. So for the first increment, all you do is chop up the cabbage, feed it to the juicer, and measure out eight ounces. I went the fresh route each time because I didn't want the cabbage juice to oxidize and lose some nutritional value, though that doesn't seem to be all that important per the study. It's much more convenient to juice twice or even just once per day and then store it in the fridge instead of juicing the cabbage fresh four times per day. I didn't do this when I was following the protocol in 2015, but now, anytime I drink cabbage juice, I try to make sure to consume some fat along with it so that I absorb the vitamin K that is also found in cabbage. Here I'm using coconut oil. After my first 8 ounce increment of cabbage juice, I would wait about an hour or two and then drink my second 8 ounce increment of cabbage juice. So I repeated the same process. I wish I'd read Dr. Cheney's studies before I followed this routine the first time because I would have had the second increment with my first meal instead of drinking it on an empty stomach. If I consumed cabbage juice with a meal, I wouldn't need to take something like coconut oil as long as there is some fat in the meal. I aim to consume around 10 grams of fat when I drink cabbage juice now. After my second 8 ounce increment, I would wait another hour or so and then have my first meal of the day. During this time, I almost exclusively ate baked chicken, steamed white rice, and steamed yellow squash or zucchini. I generally ate this meal twice per day and that was it. I still think this is a pretty excellent meal choice that falls in line with phase 1 of the Biomoptima protocol. The only change I would really make to this specific meal is the addition of fermented vegetables for the added probiotic microorganisms, but overall, if I could do it over again, I would diversify my meal choices a little bit so that I wasn't always eating the exact same thing and I would make sure they were specifically designed to improve the composition of the gut microbiome. And again, the Biome Optima meal plan offers several great example recipes that are meant to do exactly that to improve the composition of the gut microbiome, which I think complements the cabbage juice routine very well. After my first meal, I usually waited two to three hours before drinking my third eight ounce increment of cabbage juice. I generally worked out during those hours and then would consume the cabbage juice when I got home. I followed the exact same steps, chop, juice, drink. And now I make sure to consume around 10 grams of fat for vitamin K absorption unless I consume the cabbage juice with a meal. 
Then I would wait about an hour after that and eat dinner, which was again the baked chicken, steamed white rice, and steamed squash or zucchini. Retrospectively, besides incorporating at least a few more of the Biomoptima recipes, one more change I would make would be to drink my last 8 ounce increment of cabbage juice with my dinner. I did not do that, however, and instead, I ate dinner and then would wait about an hour or so after dinner before consuming my last 8 ounce increment of cabbage juice. And then once again, I followed the exact same steps. Chop, juice, drink. And then now, I would consume some fat if necessary. And this last increment finally got me to 32 ounces total of cabbage juice for the day. The last thing I did before bed was take another 2-4 to four capsules of a high quality probiotic supplement. Again, I took Fluorocore GI by AST Enzymes. And that's it. If you choose to follow a version of Dr. Cheney's cabbage juice routine, there are different ways you can do it. The main thing is drinking about 1 liter of green cabbage juice per day. That's what seems to be the necessary volume to get the dose-dependent therapeutic effects from the cabbage juice, per Dr. Cheney's work and from my own anecdotal experience. Some individuals like to split the total dose into morning and evening increments of about 16 ounces of cabbage juice each. That way they only have to drink the juice twice during the day. Some people like doing it the way I did in 4 increments of 8 ounces. And then it can also be done the way it was in Dr. Cheney's study, where 200 milliliters of cabbage juice is consumed five times per day. I would not recommend drinking the full one liter in one sitting, as that may cause some significant digestive distress. But other than that, I think the cabbage juice routine is pretty modifiable. You can add celery juice and tomato juice per Dr. Cheney's study, and some individuals like to add apple juice to make the cabbage juice more palatable. And then, just to be extra clear, you are supposed to be eating actual food in addition to the cabbage juice. This is not a routine where you just drink cabbage juice and consume nothing else. I personally benefited greatly during the 30 days that I drank cabbage juice in 2015. Now, while following a gut microbiome optimizing protocol is what allowed me to finally achieve the level of health I was looking for, I think cabbage juice is an incredible tool. And I wish I had implemented it more when I was still recovering because I think that drinking 32 ounces of cabbage juice per day for a period of time in combination with a gut microbiome optimizing protocol would be a very effective nutritional strategy to combat something like IBD. Based on what I've studied, I think that the cause of IBD is a compromised gut microbiome. So the combination of the two is really exciting to me because it utilizes the fast-acting ulcer healing properties of cabbage juice while also correcting the underlying dysbiosis of the gut microbiome. If you want to learn more about my story or reach out to me, please visit teamhonest.com. All of the information that has allowed me to get better is available on my YouTube channel for free. However, I know it can be a challenge, so if you want personalized help sifting through it all, I'd be happy to help. I do have a bachelor's degree in nutrition from Texas A&M University, and I'm currently offering online consultations if that's something you are interested in. I know what it's like to be sick. I understand that feeling of brokenness and the mental and emotional fatigue that comes along with it. I also know what it's like to get better and to regain that freedom. I can't and won't promise that you will get better, but I think it's important, whether it's with my help or without my help, to at least try to work towards improving your situation, whatever it may be. I want your situation to improve, and I think that improved nutrition can go a long way towards making that happen.